everyone, and welcome to my updated video on reshaping a Pokemon world, which again would more accurately be called matrix editing. Basically, this is just the ability to move maps around. If you are looking to start making your own full custom region, this will be very important to familiarize yourself with. Admittedly, the matrix editor in DSPRE is so similar to SDSME that not much has changed since my last original episode on this. I just want to remake it along with the others to show up doing this in DSPRE now that that tool has grown far enough to fully replace SDSME. So at the end of mapping episode 2, I left things off like this, where my maps are properly inserted, but you can still see bits of the original game around the edges. So my goal with this video will be to add a third map up north to prepare for the next video on adding buildings to maps, and then change all the other maps that will border my three custom maps to these trees. So that way, it'll look like my maps are surrounded by a forest, where obviously I will raise them up so they're actually flush with my map. That way, when I am done, it should feel like more of my own world, instead of being like my maps just fell out of the sky on the Twin Leaf Town. <laughs> so to do this, I will just open DSPRE. Or I'll open the ROM you saw me make in episode 2. Platinum Maps Clean. Now I could also continue from my ROM and contents folder that I edited during episode 2, since that old contents folder is filled with the same changes that this new ROM has. But I am choosing to edit the new ROM so that I get a new contents folder and I can keep the old one as a backup in case I need to go back to it. So I can open my ROM, which make a new contents folder right here. Okay, so I can jump to the matrix editor. Or again, when this pick list is set to zero, this grid over here is showing the overworld, where each cell of this large grid tells the game where a certain map should be loaded in the world. So for example, as we saw in the previous video, Twin Leaf Town is map 000. And I can verify this if I double click the cell and see my custom map that I inserted over Twin Leaf. And now if I just check the cell above that, I can also see my second custom map as well, the Northern Pool. So my goal here is to put a third map here, above the Northern Pool. But if you look at it, that cell is currently green. If you look closely, you can see that all the cells that are green have the numbers 0173. Each of these colored cells represents what's called a border map. Where if I open one of these, you can see it's just a map of trees, which is map 173. And each of these all point to this same map file. It's just one map being shown over and over and over and over and over to save space. Where like these blue ones down here, are like a basic ocean map. Because down here, there's like a beach. So first I want to change the cell from a border map into a white main map cell. Since my plan for my test world is not to use any of the original maps from the Platinum Overworld, I have the option to just move any of the other maps around into that spot. So I'm going to grab map number four. And all I have to do is change this to be 0004 as well. If I click off it, it turns white. Now, when you move a map, you also want to move the header. So if I switch here to the map headers, and come down, this was using 0334, so I do the same thing, 0334. Okay, that's an important step since border maps use a blank header, and if you try to change 0000, it'll basically affect all of the border maps. And okay, so now this cell is a total duplicate of this cell, for both the headers and the maps. So I'll just save for safety, there we go. But I still want my forest. So I want all of these maps around here to turn into green tree border maps, where I'll just change them to being 0173. Now you'll see if I do that, I'm gonna wipe away map six, 17, and three. Also four, but that's already duplicated here. 
So you don't have to do this, but I like you just to remind myself that these maps are no longer being used. So I'm going to preserve these maps by duplicating them in an unused cell. Like if I just come here, I can type in 0003. This one can be 0006. Like that one. And this one will be 0017. There we go. Okay. And then the same thing as before. Go to the map headers. So this one was three, so that's zero, three, three, four. This one was number six, so that is zero, three, four, two. And then this one was 17, which is zero, 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 three. Okay, so these are now duplicated and preserved over there, and I am free to change their original cells without totally wiping them off the overworld. So first, go back to the map files, and then just change this to 0173. And again. And 0173. Okay, oh, this one too. 0173. That's a border map, so I'm not really concerned about saving it. And okay, I'll do the same thing for the headers, where they just use 0000, 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and that one's already set. Okay, so that's good. I have my ring of trees, and I have my other mats preserved over here. So now I have my forest. But now we get to the part where I need to raise up the forest so it reaches up to the top of my maps since I have those high hills. So we're going to go to a tab that we haven't really touched yet. The map heights. Where basically, the number of each of these cells tells the ROM how high up to load a map. And I think this will be pretty clear if I just open up PDSMS real quick. And I'll go ahead and open... the new version of the Northern Pool. There we go. And I just switched to the height view. Okay. So, and then this, there we go. So these numbers represent the same increments that these numbers do. And the base of all three of my maps are set to one. So firstly, these three should all be the same number. Because right now this is set to two, and basically what that would do is raise up all of these numbers by two. So this would be loaded three high, then then four high, five high, and six high. So technically, the map would be loaded two high. Pun intended. So to fix that, I just come here and then change this to zero, zero, like so. And now all of these will be the same height. So that fixes the cell that my test town will go over later, but I still have to fix the trees. And now they need to be flush to the edges of my map, which are all set to number four. So you'd think that it would be as simple as setting four into all of these, but no, it turns out that border maps specifically move up in half increments up and down. So you have to take the number you want to set it to and times that by two. So four times two is eight. So all of these would be zero eight, 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 zero eight and zero 08, okay. And now they should be raised up to what they need to be. And okay, with that, all of my changes here should be done. So I can go ahead and save again. There we go. So the next step is to insert my other custom maps. So I'll start with the Northern Pool. Okay. And like I showed in episode two, you could now insert entire bin files to make this easier. So I'll just do replace bin. And I want 
want my updated folder. And if I check the episode 2.5 version of the Northern Pool, I'll have a bin here I can load. There we go. And it'll replace all of these tabs. And now you can see I have the path I would need to be able to walk to the north. And you'll have to save after replacing, so I can just you know, make sure that's committed. There we go. Come back to the matrix, and I want to insert this map as well, which you can see was the map that used to be right here. And we moved it over there. Where we just used the bin button again, and now I will insert Testington with its bin here. Uh, which is not much of a town yet, but this is the map I will insert buildings onto in the next episode. So you'll see it liven up soon. You can see that I used the base of Jubilee City, which is stored in tile set 6, and I think it came out pretty well. Now I did just replace the map I haven't edited before, so I do want to clean the events, scripts, and level scripts off this map as well. So I'll just do that quick. You don't have to save, but I'm just going to be safe again just in case. So I'm going to get to the matrix, which I can do quickly from the map headers tab and this one there. Okay, very good. So as usual, we'll start with the events that we don't have to. Okay, and you may be surprised that we are not seeing my custom map yet. If we use these arrows, it's over here. But it's loading us here. That is because it's loading in the map that the top spawnable is stored on, which is here. So this is happening because 0334, this header, was used on all four of these cells. It doesn't actually matter if that header is used on multiple cells. In fact, if I wanted to, I could change these to 000, zero and 000, zero, 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 like that. And that won't break anything. But anyway, we need to do is just the same as usual. I will go ahead and remove the spawnable and then remove overworld and the warps. Oh. Yeah, best start from the bottom. There we go. And the triggers. Okay. And then to prevent that black screen issue that I showed you in episode two, I just need to come over to Testington and then I place a spawnable. There we go. And now if I do all that and save the events, I should be able to come back to the header editor, click open events, and now it will open me into the correct map because now that first spawnable is here. Okay, that's all done. Save again to be safe. Now I'll come back to the header editor and I will go to the scripts where like usual, I will clear out all these tabs. So delete, delete, and then I will highlight all but the top line for the scripts and type end. So that way there's one script left and we can save. All right, good, good, good. So that's already done. And then just come to level scripts where I just clear them as such. There we go. And okay, that is already done. Right now, just to be clear, I already cleaned off this map in episode two, so I don't have to do that part again. So okay, all of my changes are done. So from there, I can save, make a new ROM on my desktop, which I will call Platinum 3 Maps Clean. All right, save it. And give it of that. There we go. Shows up right there. Perfect. So we're done with DSPRE for now. And if I come back here, I can go ahead and open up the new ROM. There we go. Just blow through the intro again as usual. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so. No info needed. Touch the ball. I'll go with Lucas. Yay. Yes. And yet again, Roy. Okay, yes, my own adventure looking good. 
come back through here. And I'm hoping if we leave up here north and come up to what should now be the nice, yes, nice big gap that I have up here on this map. Come up the ladders and yes, I have my lush forest. It should be that if I come all the way around, that this four should now continue. Yep, there we go. They're all up here now. Ah, this is perfect. So now it feels like I just have a random little spot here in the forest. And then up here, I have what you'll see in the next episode, the base of Testington. Which you can see, oh, if you look real close, it can look a little rough here in this movie. Which I think I can make it look a little better if I go into the settings for 3D settings. And I change this to OpenGL 3.2. There we go. Okay, there you go. And okay, my town base is ready. And I think we are all set for episode 3. Where I will show you how to add buildings to a map. So I'll see you in that episode. As always, the tools and files for my example maps are included in the downloadable folder you can get from the description. So be sure to grab them if you haven't already. Good night, everybody!